In this video, we're going to talk about bringing video into the all new Adobe Captivate. So a few things have changed about the all new Adobe Captivate and how it deals with video. There, of course, is slide video that you're probably familiar with if you've used uh, Adobe Captivate Classic. But also, too, there's this new grid format of video as well. And we're going to talk about the differences between these two video formats and when you would use each. Let's get started. To add either of the two types of video that you can add to an all new Adobe Captivate project, you're going to click on the Add Media Blocks icon in your left hand toolbar. From there, you're going to select either slide video or what I've been referring to as video grid, but you know, maybe there's a better phrase for it there or just plain video. But for starters, let's just talk about slide video. And there are reasons that you would use one or the other. And a lot of them have to do with the way video is displayed on the slide here. So let's start off with slide video and we'll talk about some of the benefits and why you might use that. So let's add slide video. You'll see the video block appears here. And like most blocks in Adobe Captivate, whether they're widgets or just regular non-interactive blocks, you can choose the design layout of what you particularly want for this particular slide. And of course, you can add or turn off any of the components that are available to you, such as title, body, card. Let's go back to the original design here since it doesn't have any of those. And we'll just kind of leave this generic at this point here. Now, I'm going to open up my timeline so that you can see that this particular slide is three seconds long. This video, this default video that Adobe gives you as just a placeholder is also three seconds long. But I'm going to click on this icon in the middle of this video here, which is the add video button. When we select that, we can choose one of the three places that you can get video for your Adobe Captivate slide video. The first is assets, where you could go to the asset store and find a video. The ones that are there are typically useful for maybe title pages where you're introducing a new uh, topic or lesson. System would be a video that you have on your computer, uh, such as an MP4. And the third option is actually two options in one. If you select web, you can insert a video from the web, either YouTube or Vimeo, and you simply paste in the URL to that video, and the green check mark will just let you know if that's an acceptable video or not. I'll hit cancel at this point because the type of video I'm going to add is from my local computer system here. So I'm going to select the middle icon, and what I want you to pay attention to is what happens to the timeline when I select this video of college dorms in New Jersey. So right off the bat, you probably noticed that the timeline went from three seconds to much longer. And that's why they refer to this as slide video. This video spans the duration of this slide's timeline. And one of the reasons that you cannot add a second video to this slide using the slide video format is that one video takes up the whole duration of the slide. So you can't really add a second slide video. This video will play in sync with the rest of your project. One of the benefits of doing that is that you can have annotations appear that coincide with certain points in the video. More likely, one of the things that you might do with this type of video is not allow learners to proceed to the next slide until they've completed the video here. So let's add a second slide just as a placeholder for right now. We'll go to the end of this video. I've extended the duration of the timeline just by a couple of seconds here. And I'm going to place my playhead right at the end of the video here. And I'm going to insert an interactive component, which in this case will simply be a button that will take us to the next slide. So let's just label this 
And we can set that up to simply go to the next slide once the user clicks on it. What's cool about this is that if I go to an earlier point on the timeline and press play, you'll notice the next button doesn't appear until the video completes. And then at that point, you could have it then allow them to jump to the next slide. Let's resize this a little bit so that that next button appears closer to the bottom and we get more real estate for our video itself here. I'm going to insert another slide and specifically I'm going to put in a question slide. I'm going to choose a multiple choice question slide and we'll just put a simple question here. This video is located in which of the following states? It's a terrible question, but you'll have to excuse me. So let's make the correct answer New Jersey as it is. New York will be a distractor. And let's add a couple of more distractors here. Okay, so I'm going to click outside of the objects here and we are going to make this an unlimited question and we'll select the answer in which the correct answer is New Jersey and we'll click done. And we're going to change this from a graded question to a knowledge check question because we want people to just keep trying this until they get it correct. I'm going to change the design of this question because I think I'd really like to be able to make it transparent in the background. And how I can do that is select one of the design options that has a background and uses a card structure like this. And we can simply change the appearance. Instead of an image background, we can make it a solid background. And we can set that to be 0% opacity. So the background will truly show through. Now, if we return to our slide with the video on it, we can pick a point on the timeline, say at the five second mark, and we can add what's known as a bookmark. We can give that bookmark a name, overlay knowledge check, as long as it's meaningful for you. And then we can select an action for that particular overlay button. Go down here and we will add overlay. Now, when I add an overlay, it allows me to select which slide will become an overlay. If you take a look at this multiple choice we just created, as I click on this option, suddenly it will tuck into the video itself and become sort of part of that whole video interaction. And of course, with the video, when we get it right, we don't want it to simply go to the next slide. We actually just want it to resume the timeline. Okay, so we'll click done here and let's just preview what this looks like. So with slide video using overlays, we can show something that will be truly interactive and that learners can click on. Again, you can still see the video behind it here. We can choose the correct answer and hit submit, click anywhere, and then it resumes the video. So you can turn a otherwise passive video into something that's truly interactive. Let's create a new project for the other type of video that we're going to talk about today. So if I click on the add media blocks icon, you can see, see we've got slide video. Now let's take a look at video or video grid, if you will. I'm also going to open up my timeline so that you can see what happens here. But once we've added the video grid option, it gives us a default of two videos, but you don't actually have to have two videos. You can have one video or you can have three videos. If you want more than three videos, you can always add another video block. Notice that slide video is now grayed out. So that's not an option for you to add at this point. Again, with slide video, you can only add one video per slide, but with video grid, you can add as many as you wish, really. So now we have a bunch of videos. 
And in the way that you replace the video with the video of your choosing, you just click on this add video icon. And again, you can choose either video from YouTube or Vimeo, or again, you can choose a video from your system or from the asset store. One of the differences here, and let's actually take this first block and reduce it down to just one video, and we can increase its size accordingly. One of the things that you probably notice is that these types of videos are not synchronous with your project. Remember, this is a 32 second video, but it still only takes up three seconds on your slide. The reason for that is that this type of video is asynchronous with your project. So if you need to time something to coincide with the video, this would not be the way to go. One of the advantages of this video grid option is that you give learners their own playback controls, which not only include play and pause and a scrub bar, but they can control their own volume settings and they can even make that video go full screen if they wish. So it's flexible in a completely kind of different way. This is a lot like event video was with Adobe Captivate Classic. One of the other differences though with event video or video grid or whatever you wanna call it, is that we now have the ability to add closed captions to this. So if we have a narration that goes with this video, you can match that up with captions that would appear on screen. You can also do captions with slide video as well. Video Grid would be a great option if you are creating, let's say, one of those infinite scrollable e-learning courses that includes a variety of different blocks that just keep you scrolling down and scrolling down until you reach maybe the final quiz questions. But if you need to have videos play throughout that, and you wanna give the learners the ability to play and pause, rewind, fast forward, and all that good stuff, this is an excellent choice for that particular format of e-learning. So let's do a preview of this particular type of video, and I think you'll see uh, some real benefits to it and how it could be used in your own projects. So this first video here, we can play it from where it's presently located, we can pause it, we can use the scrub bar to take us to earlier parts. We can go full screen if necessary. And, you know, we can scroll down to the rest of our course, including these additional videos. And then the learner has control when those videos actually play. Same thing down here. We can play these back. We can go full screen and you have a lot more control with these videos. So in summary, I'm gonna say that slide video is excellent if you want a traditional slide-by-slide -slide type of e-learning course. You wanna have interactive video where perhaps a knowledge check question or some other slide that you design appears over top of the video at key points or you simply wanna annotate a video and have different items appear in time with perhaps some of the narration in the video. Slide video is great for that. If you're building one of these continuous infinite scrolling e-learning courses, the new video grid or event video, if you wanna call it that, is probably a better choice because of course it gives the control of the video over to your learners and they can play, they can pause, they can use the scrub bar, they can set their own volume level, and they can even go full screen. The choice, of course, is up to you. The design will certainly dictate perhaps one or the other, but hopefully my video today has given you some insight as to what the features are of these two video formats and when to use them. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com.
and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.